know. I want to tell you a little bit about this documentary that will be on view now afterwards in the bar. Um, and in a way, it really is... Being a banker in a former existence, I am absolutely delighted when I see our history being made work for our present circumstances. And it's, the British have been at this for years, and we're only waking up to the fact that we have a fantastically interesting, exciting, colourful history to tell the world about. I've written many books, but I have to say that no matter what I write, everybody always wants to know about one person, and that is Grace O'Malley. She is a fantastic export for this country, and particularly for this area. And it's things like festivals like this and boat races and things done in her name that will, in a very practical sense, help communities like Ackett in these very, very trying financial circumstances. So I love to see when a story like Grace Somali that I happen to have had something to maybe spread the news a little bit about comes home and is looked at in a practical sense to see how it can help the president communities in the areas in which she once lived. Now, the Pirate Queen um, uh, got onto this silver screen many years ago, and the first one I did was with Ryark, that lovely Irish production company called Ryark, and I did that, uh, it was a half an hour documentary, and I love looking at it because it's done 25 years ago, and it's like uh, as Oscar Wilde and the uh, portrait of Dorian Gray, I'm looking at myself 25 years previously. And it was so the last. Ladies, you can know the feeling. And it was the last it's century. Terrific. It was uh, the last century. I know, don't rub it in. It's a <laughs> minute, it's a uh, I was a child writer anyway. So. <laughs> now, the background a Discovery approached me about in 2002 to see could they purchase the documentary rights to the biography because, like me, they were fascinated about the factual story about Grace Somali. There's a lot of fiction about her, and that's all very good and true, but I think the factual story story always tends to outshine. Indeed, it's keeping the lid on Grace O'Malley uh, to try and get over the factual story about her. Uh, I think that oftentimes is important. Um, the Warrior Woman series was a drama documentary uh, production by October Films, who work out of London, and they were making it for the Discovery Channel Europe network. Now, they selected five iconic women around the world. Uh, each of them with attitude, each of them had made a contribution and an impact on their history, and most importantly, that their memory had survived the intervening uh, centuries. So they choose, the five women they choose for this series were Udika, Queen of the Iceni, who, as you know, brought the Roman Empire to its knees in Britain. You had Wang Conger, the original Mulan. Now, I know Disney made a lovely... Um, um, uh, animated uh, movie off Mulan, but this was the real gal, and believe me, she was some uh, lady. She challenged the emperor, the, the power of the emperor of, of China. Then you had Joan of Arc, whom we are all familiar with, who led the French in victory against the English. You had a less known one called Lozen, the North American Apache princess who was also a psychic and would have been Geronimo's, and we all know about Geronimo, but again, we never heard about Lozen. And she was his best warrior and advisor. And finally, we had our own Grace O'Malley, commander of an army and navy by sea, who mastered sail and swords, uh, and to protect her family and followers, challenged the might of the government of Queen Elizabeth I here in Ireland in the 16th century. So these ladies all spanned 2,000 years, but I think it's a great tribute to Grace O'Malley that out of continents and countries that she was chosen one of the five women. Um, and like Grace O'Malley, all these women made an extraordinary contribution to their life and their particular culture. Um, now, we were, I worked very closely with the director, whose name, Noel Dockstadter, would tell you immediately he hadn't a clue about Irish history and had never been to Ireland before. So consequently, we had a lot of filling in to do in terms of 16th century history, which, because of its very nature, is a difficult one, not merely for us, but you can imagine from an outsider, comprehend. 16th century Irish history does not have the more usual ideological 
um, banners, if you like, like nationalism and patriotism that were more used to for later centuries. <laughs> this was a century of survival of tribal loyalties where a powerful and more progressive neighbor decided for various reasons to try and take over. So you have to think Iraq, Afghanistan, Ireland in the 1600s, and that is the atmosphere and the background in which Grace O'Malley had to operate, like all other chieftains in Ireland at the time. To try and tell that to an American was very difficult, so that was my first big uh, uh, work to do on getting Noel Dockstadter to take on board the background, the practical, factual background to Grace O'Malley's story. Once over that, we had a lot of other challenges to take on board the social and historical background, and also to draw in Grace O'Malley's long life, although she was active on land and sea with sword and ship, and lived through the most traumatic decades of Irish history. She was an old woman. She survived to be 73 years of age, which I can tell you in the 1600s, ladies, was like 120. The average life expectancy of women in the 16th century was 35 years. So Grace O'Malley, given what she did, what she accomplished, it's quite extraordinary that she lived to that. But to draw her in into one hour was quite difficult. You were aiming at an international audience. Again, you had to make sure that it was digestible for people who possibly didn't even know where Ireland was, let alone have heard about Grace Somali. Um, and we had Lucy Lawless, the famous Princess Zena, which I see on the website uh, for this festival. She was supposed to be here today, so I know all you guys particularly are desperately disappointed <laughs> that you have only me instead. <laughs> She was a joy to work with. Uh, she's from New Zealand, and maybe that was the reason that there was no star um, aloofness attaching to her. And she went, as you will see from the documentary, or from the drama documentary, she really absorbed it and loved doing the Grace Somali side of things. And of course, her ability with swords and various weapons, which she displays in the documentary, with that she had plenty of practice in the Princess Ina days. Now I want to tell you about the practicalities of this and where it has been and it comes back to what I said at the beginning, making Irish history work for today, for us. It had a big budget, this series, of 1.5 million, which back in 19 or 200, 2002 was quite a big budget for a drama documentary. It has very good production value and also there was a lot of location work which you will see and I'm sure you will see well, it's all familiar to you because it's all set in this beautiful area here. Now the sheer scale of Discovery's coverage is really remarkable. They have 100 million uh, viewers across 51 countries. This series was shown in all European countries, including the UK, in the Middle and Far East, in Australasia, Canada, USA, and Latin America. Indeed, I remember about four years ago, a friend ringing me from Kuala Lumpur and said, my God, I'm just after putting on one of our thousand channels, and I was just flicking, and I saw you on, on the screen in Kuala Lumpur, and they were watching <laughs> this documentary that had been done. Not only was it shown that way, but it was repeated 30 times in a period of five years. So if anybody is here from Board Fulcher, you can see really what this documentary did, what Board Fulcher wouldn't have a budget for a minute of what was done in this. This was shown around the world in all these countries. It was seen by so many people. And I'm sure even if 1% of the 100 million came here to see where it was shot, at least it had some positive benefit in economic terms for uh, this area of Ireland. Um, it was great, personally, it was a great experience. I've been trying, as you know, and I'm sure you're listening to me here saying it on television and radio and everything else, I'm trying to get a phone led on Grace O'Malley. It's had a lot of ups and downs. I was commissioned to write a script, which is done, and I now was commissioned to write an eight-part series for television, which the treatment is done. It'll come eventually, I suppose, if we're all, I'd possibly be drawing the pension by the time it gets around, but sure, what about you? It comes eventually, it will, it will happen. So we're keeping going on that one, and it would be fantastic for the area if they did decide to film it, of course, as it should be here. But that sadly isn't always the case, as we know, where films is concerned at the moment. Um, 
I just want to say that it's great to be back here in Aachen again. Uh, as I said at my previous, I've talked about Grace and Mary all around the world, and it was my first time in Aachen to be invited to Aachen, so I hope it's not the last time that I, I maybe be invited back again. Uh, I know you're going to uh, see so many people, locals, locations in the, in the film that you recognize. So rather than me rabbiting on about it, just want to say again, Thank you very much. This is the first Grace O'Malley Festival and I have a sudden, I have a funny feeling that it's not going to be the last. Thank you very much.